welcome back here to Josh's Frogs today. I am a reptile keeper here. Uh, my name's Brandon. I'm here to talk to you guys today about our thick toe banded geckos. Uh, scientific name, Pachydactylus fasciatus. They are a temperate arid species endemic to southern Namibia. So we're here today just to real quickly go over how to do a nice bioactive setup for your newly acquired gecko. Um, we highly recommend using our de desert bio, uh, bioactive substrate. Um, it's been packed full of good stuff like activated charcoal and sphagnum and all that kind of stuff. And it's also designed to be, to play nicely with your desert arid species. So it's not gonna have, you're not gonna have to have the entire uh, enclosure just soaked and have a bunch of ambient warrant humidity inside your enclosure. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step and show you guys how to get this all set up and going. We're gonna, and then when you go, and I don't have like a giant bottle of water with me today, so can't exactly show it off, but what you're gonna wanna do with our desert bio bedding is set up a bottom layer, get substrate all over wherever you're working, um, but a good mix. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna soak all of this substrate through um, you're not gonna want it if you like pick up some of the substrate and like really squeeze it You're not gonna want to like have water come out But you want like your bottom layer here to be retaining a level of humidity So we're just gonna go through And give that a good mix and let's see if we can't um, Get some of that looking kind of how like it's going to So right there is kind of how you're going to want your bottom probably about half an inch to an inch of substrate to look like. Um, I'm not going to sit here and go at the hose for all, all day and night. but And then you'll get your second layer of substrate. And we'll try not to spill it all over the table this time because that's way more cleanup. And then this layer is going to go in completely dry. Give that a good mix. And what you'll have is right about this midpoint here, you'll have a clear like line in the substrate where there's going to be wet substrate towards the bottom and you're going to have your dry layer towards the top. That's going to control how much humidity is rising up through the substrate and keep things nice and dry because thick toe banded geckos like an ambient humidity of about 40 to 50%. So you're gonna wanna not have things be too wet in here for them. That could result in those sorts of problems. You also want to make sure that they're not being kept too dry. Uh, I highly recommend uh, including some sort of a hide in there for them filled with sphagnum moss, uh, giving them that nice little humid pocket in order to choose high humidity if they want to. That will help out a lot if you have any shedding issues. With this all set up, uh, we highly recommend using uh, dwarf tropical white isopods and temperate springtails inside of your bioactive enclosure. These guys are going to help aerate your soil and are going to help with general soil health. Um, and then inside of the enclosure, if you have a bioactive setup, it's a great situation for doing all sorts of live plants. Uh, helps with air health and just is in general a nice bit of a bit of enrichment for your animal. Inside of these enclosures, obviously you're not going to be keeping things super wet. So any plants that you keep in here, you're going to want to be things that are more tolerant of drier, uh, potentially lower nutrient grade soil. So this little guy here today will be more than enough. We'll do just fine in here. We're gonna just this guy right just plop them right in the soil 
thick tail banded geckos do like to dig around a little bit on occasion, but they're not gonna do anything too crazy where they're uprooting all of your plants. You're gonna wanna have a nice few bits of selection of cork bark, um, thin oak bark. Uh, these guys do dig a little bit, so anything that you put in here needs to either be light or it needs to be anchored securely to the bottom of your enclosure because obviously you don't want to be smashing your little friend. And what they're really going to enjoy, because out in their natural habitat, um, they're really going to like little nooks and crannies. So any bits of sort of like um, how you might tesseract a monitor enclosure any bits of little nooks and crannies, they're gonna find all those and like to hide in them. And, and then for these guys, you'll be wanting to miss, uh, miss them about two times a week. They're not going to so much drink any sort of water dishes or anything like that. Really what they're going to be looking for is dew and all that kind of stuff. So you'll wanna spray down one part of the enclosure and leave the rest of it dry. And in between mistings, you wanna make sure that all the substrate is drying out. And then for lighting, UVB is not an absolute necessity for this species, but obviously all animals benefit from, UV, from some level of UVB. Uh, we have a nice selection of Arcadia lighting on our site. Uh, any sort of low emittance UVB bulbs is going to be more than enough for these guys. So let's talk about our heating situation. Uh, this is going to be a great product for your little friend. This is just our uh, Zilla Halogen Mini Domes. It's a great low profile bulb. Um, the halogen bulbs themselves don't take up that much wattage at all. Uh, I'm gonna put a 25 watt halogen bulb inside this guy today. And that should output all of the heat that you're gonna need. You'll really want to be using like a bit of cloth or something to put that in because touching the bulb directly is going to create minor imperfections that will shorten the life of the halogen bulb. Um, but for your uh, heat for these guys, they like it a little bit hotter. Uh, the ambient temperatures in the enclosure can range uh, from room temperature and up. So anywhere from 75 to 85 degrees, you will likely achieve around that range with the ambient heat coming from the heat source. But you really want to achieve a nice hot spot. You're going to want to achieve it a hot spot of at least 95 degrees for these guys. Uh, you obviously don't want to cook them at anything like 110 or something like that, but they do like it a little bit hotter. Again, these guys are from southern Africa, uh, primarily living in more temperate arid regions. So you can, it's not quite the Sahara Desert, obviously, because Namibia is a little farther down south than that, but it's still definitely a desert region. So you can imagine the kind of little rocky deserts and stuff that these guys are living in. For monitoring all this stuff, Simple uh, temperature hygrometer probe like this works just great. Uh, you can just stick this in through the grating towards the top here, cut a nice little hole in there. And really, I would recommend measuring the hot spot over anything else, because again, slightly above room temperature is what you're going for. And then I think our enclosure is all ready for our gecko. These guys are a nervous gecko. Uh, world's a scary place when you're the size of a thumb. Uh, this is a fully grown adult, and we're going to slowly... They are flighty, but they are definitely... Wor you can definitely work with them. And you're just going to want to be really just methodical and slow. Oh. And he's going to freak out. 
Pelicans. He is super stressed. Definitely shy little fellows. Um, and that's exactly why we're creating all those nice little nooks and crannies inside the enclosure, because that's what's gonna help them feel nice and secure and safe. Uh, they will definitely be a little bit more handleable as they feel more and more secure. You don't want to make, you don't want to confine him or anything like that or make him feel like he's being trapped. And he will be a sweet little fellow for you. Definitely more of a look at lizard. These guys are nocturnal, so definitely be uh, looking out once the sun goes down in your enclosure for them. They are going to eat your standard array of insect feeders, crickets, dubia, mealworms, all of that good stuff, all appropriately sized, of course. Uh, usually I'm using around uh, quarter inch dubias and around that size. All right, and that has been setting up your Pachydaculus fasciatus, uh, common name thick toe banded gecko. Be sure to check out our website for these guys. We've had great success uh, rearing them here and we're excited to share them all with you, so. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible, so we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.